Hello and welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers to uh, my tournament review. Yeah, that's it. Tournament review of Throne of Schools. Now you'll notice um, James isn't here with me today. We decided to do them separately because uh, we don't like each other anymore. It's, it's, it's the, the truth of it, really. Now, uh, we decided to do the video separately because uh, we reckon that it could easily go on for sort of, you know, an hour each. So. That would be one two hour video where it makes more sense for us to do two one hour videos so you guys can sort of well watch the one that you actually like on the channel. Um, so Throne of Skulls was amazing. Um I've got I've got a little cheat sheet here, so I'm probably gonna be referencing to this a lot. Um we arrived late on the Friday uh, daytime uh, because we were hoping to get there for the Throne of Lulls that Damien ran and unfortunately Due to Steve not being able to find where I live, despite you know living in the same area as me, my road's sort of like a Bermuda Triangle of Ermston. Um, then Kieran, Kieran, uh, he was a little bit late on the train, so we missed the start through our lols. And because they had 16 people, which is the perfect number for a single round elimination tournament, we couldn't take part in that. Thanks, Damien, friend. Um, I got to stand in as a ringer when someone left early, so I got to actually play with my all infantry Rohan force, and they actually won two games. They beat Charles Sims's um, two dwellers, spiders, bat swarm, gulivar, spammy army. Uh, managed to throw in spear things to death, and then I played up against a Harad force with half trolls, watchers, Akana, a fell beast with betrayer on top, and. Yeah, Hydra's Bim and Taskmaster, that kind of stuff. Uh, see the prize, and surprisingly I managed to win. It involved lots of shielding, and just pushing people back off the objective, grabbed it, legged it away. Uh, also, 40 throwing spears at the Fell Beast, managed to take all the fate off the, uh, the Ring Wraith, and didn't kill it because I couldn't roll a 4 plus on the second dice from the 6s. But, all infantry Rohan so far is unbeaten. So, Onto the tournament itself, there, this, the, this, the, um, the, the, what's it called? The format for the tournament is random opponents, and the start of each game, after each game, at the start of each game, you roll dice and you play that scenario with duplicates being re rolled. So the first game, I was drawn against Dave Shearer, and we were playing high ground. Now, the boards are the Citadel Realm of Battle boards, so some of them didn't have hills on them, because um, Games Workshop don't produce hills anymore, besides those rubbishy ones, I don't like them, the big, you know the ones I mean, the, the big huge ones, the rubbish. Uh, <laughs> so for us it was going to be the inside of an Osgiliath Ruins, that was, was the high ground essentially. Um, Dave Shearer took a, an Isengard force, essentially one third crossbows rescue, one third ferals slash berserkers with a captain who was his general, and then a shaman with shields, pike supports, and a Isengard troll. Um, I could tell from the terrain that the troll wasn't going to get into the high into the high ground, uh, the Osgiliath yeah. ruin, without going through one of the entrances. So I didn't have to worry too much about it. And the Woeses, really, I finally got to use them against an Isengard force. And with their axes, they went through them so quickly with the uh, flat value five spear supports. No, I was going up to like say strength five or six, so against the ferals, if I was strength five, we were winning them on fours normally. They get plus one, so we were winning them on threes, and yeah, it was all just a bit of a massacre really. And I managed to win in the end, hooray! Victory points didn't matter for anything, so I didn't record any of them unfortunately, so I don't know my final scores for my games, but I did win that one. Then um, I was drawn against Owen Wright, and Owen and I looked at each other and were kind of like, should we ask if we, our opponents if we can swap because we've played each other most of the tournaments and you know, Throne of Schools is all about meeting new people. So we swapped uh, and then the scenario was rolled and we got Lords of Battle and I sort of leapt for joy, danced around the table as Owen had taken a dragon with Tough Hide and Fly and the Watcher in the water and there's no way I'd be in that. So I, I kind of got a bit lucky there. I ended up playing Lords of Battle against James Watt. And it was a Gondor force I was up against, where very sort of a horde Gondor force. There was Faramir, Denethor, Beragond, and Damrod, and just oh no, Denethor, sorry. But I cut that out. There was Kyrian, not Damrod. <coughs> and then 
they could have charged in me first turn, didn't get any turns of shooting off. Um, but my fact that you really paid the part there, and again, the woes with the axes sort of broke through and wrapped around and did what they had to do. And I think the game wasn't as one sided as I just made out. There was one turn, I was, I think I had about 28 victory points, and James had about five or six, and I was like, yeah, I got this in the bag, this is mine. Because, you know, I see like there's about 20 minutes left, and in one turn, I think about 14 guys died. And I was just like, whoa, whoa, game's not over. Uh, I did win though, so, you know. Tournament winning Wood Elves for the win. Um, next game was <coughs> Hold Ground against James Rose, but before that, we had lunch uh, in the restaurant attached to Bugman's Bar. Lunch was nice. It was, was it, was it steak? No, that was Sunday. What did I have? I can't remember what I had. Food was good though. No complaints there. Uh, it's also it's included in the ticket cost, so it's really convenient to have like a nice big cooked meal and then go back to gaming. So next game was Hold Ground. I was drawn against James Rose. But James Rose is one of the staff members from the um, Warhammer World Games Workshop store, and he brought Bayorn, Renegast on Slay, and Treebeard. And despite that being quite a tough army, I was quite confident with just my numbers being able to outnumber him on the objective by the end of the game. So for deployment, I burnt might to make sure everyone could come on close together, and James rolled quite poorly for some of his. Some of them didn't turn up for a while, and Bayorn rolled a two, and so I put him on the far corner of the board. Um, Bayon took eight turns to become bear form, and so after the first, as soon as he got into bow range, I was like, oh, I'm gonna sacrifice everything and just try and kill him with bows before he becomes a bear, because obviously he's a man, he's defense five, as a bear he's defense eight and much harder to kill. So I just kind of shot everything I could at him, uh, kept getting him down to sort of no fate, two wounds, and then Redigast with uh, hero channel top him back up, and yeah, I. I he got. Into, he became a bear for one turn, charged in, hurled something, and died the next turn to combat. So maybe I should have just left it for that. I uh, managed to take down Radagast with the, my eagle. Uh, picked him up, hurled him. Obviously, then to get rid of the slay. And then whilst he's on the floor next turn, charged in, rendered, and did about I think four wounds. He didn't pass all his fates and went down. And then Treebeard eventually went down. I had no might by this point. So I was just charging everything in, <coughs> waiting for them to not, not roll the six and keep pace and strike with the Roses. And eventually, uh, I think I took him for the table. So that was three wins at three. Next game was Domination, and I think I turned up late from the gaming hall. I, you know, honestly, I'd been to the toilet and was just running late. And obviously, my opponent was like, oh, I've not got an opponent. So he got matched up with someone else. And I ended up playing Dave Shira again. And I was like, oh, hey, Dave. And he was like, oh, great, we'll play you again. Um, and the game was domination. So objectives were set out, sort of one at the extremes of each board, one on sort of like the opposite side either way, and then obviously the one in the middle. There was a huge scrap over the one in the middle. Um, but for me, my plan was always going to be if Dave didn't leave anything at his far objective, my eagle's going to fly over there to it which you know, at the end of the game it did, and I'd send elves to run off sort of the Courage 6 uh, girls of the Caladrian Court to go and take the two on my side here. And again, the Roses and Garnbring Arm did what they needed to do, absolutely just butchered their way through sort of the, uh, the Urukai, and the game ended 18 or so to myself with victory conditions. So that was four out of four in day one. I'm pretty happy so far. Uh, then I went back to, well, we went into Bugman's Bar for the, uh, the Green Dragon quiz and, you know, we tried to kick James out of the team, but he just stick, stuck with us like, you know, a stray dog. So, we ended up having seven people on our team, which other people weren't happy about. Blame James for that one, just, you know. We had a nice team, and then he came in late and was like, oh, it's another space. So like, no, no, sorry. Sorry. And then he just sat, in the bar, sat down with a pint next to us for the entire time. We were just like, dude, there are other teams. And he was like, no, 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 it's fine. So we eventually like, do you want to just join our team? Because you're going to cry if not. And he joined our team and we won. 
no thanks to James and myself, it was pretty much like Damien, Tom, Ed and Callum and Jay who did all the work. Um, I was feeding misinformation and getting the answers wrong. Um, after that, uh, we decided that we'd go out, out, like properly out into Nottingham Town Centre. Uh, we went up with some of the other guys, uh, went to Rock City, got absolutely smashed. Um, I went back to James Braun and Craig Johnson's and fell asleep on their floor and then tried to get into Jake Craig's bed and got kicked out of bed and then ended up sleeping in the garden and my back was aching for about a week afterwards so don't sleep on floors um, I obviously went into game day two and I was still drunk in the first game uh, I was not looking forward to it but fortunately I was drawn against Sam McGuinness and Sam is an absolutely smashing guy he'd been out the night before so he was feeling just as bad as me and um, yeah, I got quite lucky that I was playing against someone in a similar state. I wouldn't like to have played against someone fresh as a daisy and sort of give them a bad game. Um, the game was rescue, and Sam rolled higher than me and decided that he would try and kill Legolas in the centre rather than you know try and break me, which in hindsight was probably a, the wrong way round for him to do it. But that's how the game goes. Um, I stopped in the centre. Legolas runs away. And the trees came after me. He had named them, obviously, Treebeard leading them. We had Edward Woodward, we had Morgan Treeman, and. Oh! Donald Trunk! That was it, the last one, Donald Trunk. And then Merry and Pippin as well. It's a very cool army. Um, the game ended up a draw because I was never going to let Legolas be caught by the trees because I had Mike to Heroic March and Move. And. Sam hurled my entire army as they went in to stop the trees and broke me. But unfortunately for him, breaking means nothing for him in that scenario. And for me, uh, it's all about breaking his army, which I was never going to do. So that game ended a draw, and you know we were quite happy neither of us got through the game without hurling each other. Um, or hurling ourselves. Yeah, that's it. Um, so that was the draw. I was about like, yeah, well, you know, could have been worse, could have been a loss. Next game was Blockade against David Alexander, and I was feeling much better by this point. I was actually, you know, so sort of, I'd broken through my hangover, and I was sort of like, I'm oh, back to normal-ish now. Uh, David Alexander was in my category as well. He was Free Peoples. Uh, he had taken the twins on heavy ar on horse with heavy armor. Uh, Gildor as his general, and Rumil with a couple of uh, wood elves. So I was looking at like, oh, I don't really like this army. <laughs> It's fight five, it's got Elven Blades, it's defense six, it's not what my only wants to be dealing with. Uh, we rolled for who will be the attacker and defender, and David decided he would try and kill Legolas again. People obviously seem to have a vendetta against him, whereas I had to run Legolas off the board. So, uh, we deployed Warband by Warband, and I put down the Wozers first, since they're a bit of a throwaway unit for me. Uh, David put down Gildors on the extreme side of the board, I then put down Rumil's Warband, and then he was like, right, now I've got either the twins with a full warband or Rumil with just two elves. So we put Rumil on this side. And I was like, well, did he? They put Rumil down first, then he put Gildor down. And then he was like, well, now I've got to put the twins on that side. Otherwise, I'll just put, all I'll do is put the Neglass's warband there, deal with Rumil, and then I'm off whilst this all holds up here. So we put the twins on that side to stop Legolas setting up on that side of the board. But um, I just, well, I was never going to, I was going to keep them all together as a big chunk and just move along the board. So turn one, uh, everyone pretty much on the board calls a heroic march to try and get faster. Uh, I just move my block forwards, the twins and things move this way, Gildor begins to wrap around. Uh, next turn goes, I call a heroic march again, as does everyone else, except Gildor. Uh, these elves move in front of me, my eagle moves before the heroic march, tags Gildor, and the rest of them just sort of move again. Then the twins and everyone move down this way, and we end up with this scrap where there's a building, imagine, building here. My way over here, there's a thin line of elves blocking the way this way, and there's elves reinforced from either side. And I was able to break through the thin line and sort of imagine the door open slightly and they just legged it towards the exit. Um, it was a tough game, I got kind of lucky against the twins and managed to kill them off in two turns of combat. 
Um, the twins can either do that, they'll either fall quickly or they'll massacre and dominate the game. Uh, so that was a win for myself. And then last game was seize the prize, and I got grudged by a couple of people. Uh, Ed Ball grudged me, which I refused because I'm not going to play. What has he got? Three fell beasts and Shelob in that last game because that's, that's that's a loss for me. And in all honesty, when you're in the last game of the tournament, you're not going to choose a game that you're going to lose. If that makes sense. So uh, Dave from Ireland grudged me. I thought, you know what? I'll take a grudge match from Dave because I was meant to play him when I went over to Ireland but didn't get the time to because I didn't have the money and uh, it did not work out. So I was happy we got a game together and it was Dwarfs and he's the prize. I didn't realise he brought Dwarfs. I'd have been happier if I'd known that before I grudged him. I'd probably grudged him quicker. Um, but despite that, right, so for this game I was like, I've got this in the bag. It's Dwarfs, it's a speed scenario. So Eagle flies up, 12 inches, bam, gets the prize. The Dwarves march up and I go, okay, so you know, it's going to be a heroic move. If I win the heroic move, I win in a very few turns. If I don't, well, you know, it's going to be a couple of turns later before the Eagle can get away. Um, the Dwarves won the heroic move, so I was like, oh, okay, so I'm not going to win straight away. The Dwarves charge in, um, then I charge in, counter charge. And during, you know, he heroic strikes against the Eagle and goes, chop, because he pays and strikes and wins. And it's like, Okay, so you know you need uh, you go up to strength seven. You need fours to wound three for Jordan's axe, Roy dice uh, four four two. I was like, oh, oh, it's like that, is it? But point of might kill the eagle. The eagle dies. Jordan now has the prize. I was like, oh dear, oh no, the hardest dwarf in the game now has the prize, and I've got to kill him and then take the prize off. I'm like, great. Brilliant, that's just what I wanted. I was like, oh, my, my heart was sinking. I was like, no, this is not going to happen. So, now obviously, the fights happen. Next turn, the dwarves close the lines up as Durin begins to make his way back. I was like, I don't know. I, but, what? What is going on? Uh, <laughs> I get quite lucky on one flank and, uh, managed to sort of punch my way through and sort of do it on the other flank as well. So I've got my elves are sort of circling around the dwarves trying to get to Durin who's handed it off to Gimli and how it marched away. I was like, oh no. Like by this point might have been burnt everywhere to get try and get heroic moves and get past the dwarves to Durin. And um, it ended up coming down to priority basically and I was so so lucky to win two priorities in a row. Which meant my elves could, you know, move six with that priority. Uh, Gimli moves five. Uh, one was in range, so it's like, right, need priority. Roll the dice. I win it. That one elf gets into combat with Gimli, and the others all rush up to get ready for next turn. Next turn again, I think I won priority for the third turn on a row, which sort of sealed Gimli's fate as I was able to get my elven blades in um, into combat with him, and then go to Gladrim, supporting around the outsides which meant I had the same fight value and I'd win on a 3, 4, 5 or 6 uh, when the dice for the roll-offs done. So, after about three turns, I was able to kill off Gimli and picked it up with my Guard of Veteran Court. By this point, I was broken, so I was taking courage tests. Rumil had died in like two turns of combat. Garnbury gone, was nowhere to be seen. Legolas, he, he was stuck fighting Durin. I was fighting him off quite well, actually, surprisingly. But he was, he was nowhere near these troops at the far board edge. So, you know, I was like, okay, God, we caught Courage 6, double 1. Okay, he's gone, the prize has dropped. Next elf, he's gone. Oh, God. Next elf, he's fine, he picks it up, he runs off. And then Dave was like, right, hmm, I need to kill that elf. Lines, I, I put four guys in the way. Lines up a dwarf and ranger shot. Doing. So, I need, I've moved, so it's forced to hit. 6, uh, get past the first guy. 6. Get past the second guy, six. Get past the third guy, six. We're going into wound, fives, okay. Uh, two. It's like, whew. No, I wasn't even worried, you know. Just like, whatever. Next turn, uh, regardless who priority went to, that elf got off and managed to win me the game. But uh, we thought we'd finish the turn because, you know, we just smash each other up, basically. And Dave took me off the table, there enough. I think I had about two elves left by the end of the game. So it was, it was a great game to end the tournament, it was another win, and it was someone in my own faction, so it was great to lower my faction average. And 
So overall, I had six wins and a draw. I was fortunate enough to win the best people's category, and I got the award for it. Let me just find it here. And it's not that one. It's not that one. It's not that one. It's uh, not that one. It's not that one. It's this one. Hooray! Oh, I should go to the screen there. The King of the Lonely Mountain. That was uh, the award for winning best three peoples. And I also won this award, the Heroes of the Green Dragon Book Quiz. So, good little haul. Um, the previous awards were from other throne schools. Um, <laughs> James will hate me for that. Um, the overall winner was James Long. So, <laughs> huge congratulations to James. Uh, he took a, a scumbaggy... Uh, you know, Reavers with axes, Watchers of Karna for his bowmen, and Serpent Guard. Absolute scumbag of a human being, but he won overall, so well done, James. No, I'm joking. James is a lovely lad. Met up with him. Uh, he took part in my Deadliest Warband event, which was won by Tom Hansen, aka Thomas Harrison. Um, overall, I dropped the league position to Damien O'Byrne, who came like 11th in uh, Throne of Skulls, but he was so low on points in one of his other tournaments that he skyrocketed up and he's now hot on the heels of Edward Ball who remains in first place for the league. So, Throne of Skulls, uh, easily, easily one of my favourite tournament of the year so far. Uh, it's going to be very hard to beat it. Uh, Throne of Skulls is that tournament that if you're only going to attend one, you attend Throne of Skulls because it's just the best event um, that we've got on our, on our circuit at the moment. Uh, it's given James and I some ideas of what we can do next time for Stockport 2.0 um, to try and sort of emulate Throne of Schools because that's sort of the standard we want to get to. Unfortunately, the hot food is not going to be the option of that quality. It's going to be you know, burgers again. But um, yeah, thank you to Nick Baton for the sort of um, well, the running of the event, the, the build-up in the lead to it, the um, sort of community interaction on the Facebook page was amazing, well appreciated, and sort of you know broke down the stigma that Games Workshop with this you know men in suits after our money sort of thing. And it was nice to see the, the, the people down there, and obviously um, we showed Games Workshop our support. We got you know 80 people into that hall, sold out the tickets so many, so many times. Even if it's just you know we show one of the directors that. There is that support out there. It's fantastic for the hobby. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been, oh, I've only been talking apparently for 23 minutes. I thought I'd be going on for much longer. Obviously, James slows me down with these videos. Um, yeah. Be sure to support your hobby. hobby. Happy strategy battle gaming. Is that right? No, wait. Scratch that. Start again. Be sure to comment, like, share and subscribe. Support your hobbit hobby and happy strategy battle game.